Welcome back. You got Will and I man here from the Block Runner, MetaZone, and Rovi.ai. And today we're going to be talking about Proof of Humanity, the digital nation. Damn. Yeah, right? So Our, our slogan, not theirs. Uh, yeah, it anyway. is. But you know what? Who uses digital nation is Axie. Axie Infinity. Yeah. yeah they, so I think that's... I think that's a little bit of overreaching for them, but but I get it. They're creating a huge community, so they have millions of people, like yeah. like a nation feels, would. Feels like a nation, yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> but yeah, this is actually like the complexity potential. Not not necessarily just this singular protocol, but like, well, if you can extrapolate from here, right, you it, can kind of envision that kind of digital nation, right? Yeah, all the things that the physical world brings to you, like loans. Uncollateralized yeah. loans, the like the the fact in, that we issue inception, yeah documents in, to people, the inception of yeah your your physical identity that can yes. be leveraged by all the different like governmental entities or business entities that exist. The fact that uh, you get issued a driver's license, yeah, like all recognized by the government. That's correct. Yeah, the fact all, that you could be assigned a criminal record if you just right. do not abide by the laws of the land that's that right. you just happen to be located within. Yeah, <laughs> all this stuff, right? Like in, so how do you bring all that stuff onto on chain? Yeah, how do you? It's it's not going to just be one. You would assume the fact that yeah, all that happenings is handled by like a, a like a whole you know. Uh, an interconnected network of different services or whatever you want to call them, just uh, information harbors, you know. And again, it all starts from like an infrastructure ground level, right? And mm-hmm. mostly in, in, the, in our physical world, it's, it's uh, conducted by government organizations, right? So That's right. In the on-chain world, we're, we're replicating a lot of these governance, like uh, the fact that in order for these really long-standing critical components to our on-chain existence, in order for that to happen... There needs to be some sort of governing body, like assigning all this, you know, right? In essence, yeah. and in like the rest of the world has to kind of trust these things, right? That's right. Yeah, I think the ultimate key here is trust. Yep. Yeah, just because you were issued a driver's license, I mean, you could just you know draw up a driver's license and print it out. I mean, that's not yeah a trusted document. Yeah. And unlike we, yeah, unlike a real you know issued license ID. Yeah. Um, so and, and so what proof of humanity tries to do is take all those functions that we're all have have been used to right through throughout the existence of humanity right is is put it on on chain and so one of the things that you have to you battle against is what's known as a civil attack. So civil attack is very simple. It's essentially trying to a civil attack is when you make up a bunch of fake identities and you try to persuade, you know, some organization for for one thing or another. So it's basically a bunch of fake accounts trying to, you know, for their own agenda. Yeah. Manipulate some kind of system or something like that. Yeah. So that happens frequently across, you know, different kind of ecosystems, right? It happens everywhere. Twitter, Facebook. I mean, there's all kinds of fake accounts. So all these, everything those spam calls everyone gets, that's all civil attacks. Yeah. So I guess that's why it's important to f- find these distinguishers, these I- identifier markers within, like, you know, this whole on-chain ecosystem so we can prove, you know, participants are human or not. Right. You know? Right. So this is the start, dude. <laughs> yeah. So what we are looking at here is the Proof of Humanity website. And what I found interesting is if you scroll down, they talk about issuing a UBI token. That is interesting. We've had a, a large, like, I don't know, back in our way, way early days where we were like hardcore Andrew Yang and stuff. Yeah. Like we had yeah. a period where we just consistently talked about UBI and whether or not it would work. Yeah. Especially in, you know, like such a mature economy as like, you know, the one we exist in now. You introduce something such like a radical transition yeah it's definitely a huge shift it's a huge shift and like you know how, how would we behave as a society if all of a sudden everybody's collecting these these uh the shared value mm-hmm. you know that that's being recruited is being returned back to the the participants of the economy right it's definitely i think something we talked about is like maybe not worthy of exploration at the time just because it's it's so delicate yeah you know but I mean, if you play this out in the long term, it makes sense. The, of course, yeah. the arguments for UBI because uh, now that we have you know technology to overtake many of our jobs, 
it, it doesn't make sense for most people to be without the means yeah. to like sustain themselves. Yeah, you still whether or not you can contribute, you still have to participate. Yeah, right? like in other words, like that's if, right. Yeah, because if, if 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 we no longer need human contribution to like you know propel ourselves forward right from an economic standpoint like which it seems that's the projection that's yeah. you know that if you extrapolate exactly what we're doing you apply technologies into every single job that's out there like you don't really need a waiter or a waitress true right? eventually you just have either food delivered to your house automatically or food you go to a restaurant and food is automatically made through, yeah. through a process right like a manufacturing process yeah or like a th- 3D printer, food machine, you know, that's coming at some point well, in yeah. the next 10 to 20 years. I mean, I know they're there, yeah, but they're not mass produced yet. But yeah, there's going to be a point in time where all your goods are probably, you know, Amazon's going to install all this hardware in our yeah. houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one, yeah. And then they're going to be like the, the delivery guys, like delivering our food printer packages like <laughs> once a week. Just to make sure, like, our, our devices are, you know, sustainable. Yeah, it, it sounds sort of like dystopian. Just a little bit. It sounds badass to me, dude. It, it does. <laughs> yeah, I, to me, it sounds badass too. But yeah. but think about going to a restaurant. It's like complete. There's like all robots, and yeah. there's a lot less humans. And you know, even though it could sound dystopian, that is you know in the minds of like the CEOs of these companies. It is cheaper to yeah. outfit your business, your physical business, with robots. Then it is to like house a bunch of humans that only work for eight hours versus a robot that can work twenty four seven, right? Of course. So, so if that's the case, then from a business perspective, it makes sense to acquire these bots. And if so, yeah. there's going to be a lot less people with jobs. Yeah. And without jobs, there's either strife or there's UBI potentially. Yeah, a solution to it. So potentially you're, you're a solution. Right. Yeah, but the, the good news is, yeah, these whole crypto economies and stuff. These are the perfect ecosystem to test grounds. out these assumptions exactly. right like see see what what kind of flourish can come about if you like onboard a, an ecosystem of participants and you you put these vehicles of value in their hands just by just by the validity of them you know existing right that's the whole point it's universal mm-hmm. it's basic <laughs> it's yeah. income yeah you know as long as we test yet these the principles what happens from there like what kind of ecosystem can emerge sure yeah i mean the, the first line here says universal basic income is your right as a human yeah and so i think this is a pretty big statement i mean i'm sure there's going to be a lot of people debating this mm-hmm. uh, because if you don't provide anything to uh, your your community, then why should you get anything? Yeah, that's the big thing, right? And that's why there's like such a division and yeah. separation in that in that belief or understanding. You know, some yeah, some people are yeah. And then on top of that, like I mean, there's know, good points on both sides, right? Yeah, there is. And on top of that, is like how do you sustain a UBI token? Um, you know, d- with our economic means, like you're just going to print money all day and then, yeah. you know, how, how are you going to retain value? If well, that's that's that? kind of what's happening here. I mean, if we pull up the charts and not to just like attack this project, because, you know, if you pull up any similar chart, it's going to look yeah. equally as grim as this one, but it, it still has to be discussed nonetheless, because, you know, we're in the play to earn sector and we, we've already identified tons of different like uh, tokenomic models that are non-sustainable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically, over emission, uh, under like reinjection or something. Under I don't know. It's just a non-sustainable equation where you're just rewarding too many participants without either designing it properly, where there's like an incentive to kind of you know reuse that value extraction and mm-hmm. you know for some sort of potential future gain or some utility, something right, some kind of service you can access. I don't know, but the point is, yeah, universal basic income. It's a great hook, mm-hmm. or it's a great bait, but yeah, like, what do you do from it from there, other than liquidate? Okay. Yeah, and really, this, I guess, the reason why we're talking about proof of humanity is not because of the UBI, but because no. we need to figure out some way to prove that on-chain activity is coming from a human rather <laughs> than bots. Yeah. Because it's too easy to spin up an ETH address, and then all of a sudden, you're like transacting yeah and this is too valuable at the end of the day too because so much can be built on top of this you know that's right yeah this whole trust layer that is necessary for yeah for things like you know non-collateralized loan loans and stuff like that or i feel like that's the biggest application to this yeah i i I could be wrong i think the jobs market too like the the decentralized workforce of the future (laughs) you know 
yeah, yeah we, we we could retrieve things like GitHub profiles and whatnot whatnot today to like see whether or not like a developer is credible as yeah. far as like whether or not he knows how has some coding chops. Right. But we don't really know much outside of that, right? We don't yeah. know if he's ever like robbed or as part of some like you know um, hate organization or yeah you or know you, something like that. Yeah, just like yeah, if he's been caught like uh, you know hacking funds from like a previous yeah. project that he's that's you know, right programmed the smart contracts for things like this. Yeah. You know, that's that's a legitimate crime in the Ethereum world. <laughs> yeah. If you've ever developed a smart contract with these, like, holes in them, like, yeah. dude, you need to be perpetually punished for that and, like, ostracized from, like, for the sure. ecosystem, right? So we need yeah. all that record. I mean, think about it. That would be a huge deal because there's a process to onboarding yourself to Proof of Humanity. Yeah. And they, they have a blog on claros.io, and it explains, like, the entire process of registering um to prove you're you're human, yeah. I mean, it definitely looks interesting. Yeah, it's like you got to have vouchers. Yeah, you got basically people who are already in here, right? Yeah, vouch for you that you're, you know, who you are, who you say you are. Yeah, there's a challenge period. Then you get vouching yeah. from people who are onboarded, and then you're finally registered. Yeah, so people could like see your submission, and be like, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. I don't think so. This guy is, I don't know, fluffing it up or whatever the fuck, whatever red flags that yeah. register, you know. Yeah, think about the developer you mentioned earlier. If they go through this process, there's almost no incentive to now hack projects, mm. uh, you know, for a black hat hacker, right? There would be yeah. incentives for a white hat hacker because you would have a history of hacking and then getting paid and it's like yeah. finding holes. So that those are those are all good. Yeah. But the malicious person, you know, if they're onboarded, you know that they're not, you know, of that kind, yeah, because it because it's so hard to get registered and yeah. like finally through. Well, it, it becomes like a like a stamp of, of of trust again. Like in the same way, like businesses register to the Better Business Bureau or something like that. So yeah, if they can hang up that nice little blue sign in front of their doors or storefronts. Like, look, we, we've we've gone through some sort of accreditation process right. know, from some standard organization right. that like oversees you know bad actors within like the business world and stuff like that. So yeah, hundred percent. If a business is willing to go through all those. <laughs> What do you call them? Like, uh, like lo- hoops? Hoops and loops and whatever yeah. the fuck. <laughs> We're willing to go through all that. That says something about a business, right? So I, I'm willing to trust them a little bit better. Yeah. And like, give, you know, go through with their services or whatever the hell. Same thing in this, in this you know, uh, scenario. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. If I'm going to hire somebody to work, like I'm some DAO, right? I, I want to onboard developers to build these whatever the hell new functions for this protocol. I think the DAO is going to vote for, you know, candidates who've gone through stuff like this. And, yeah. of course, who've built that reputation for themselves over the years or whatever. Yeah. I mean, this if you go back to our previous video about Soulbound tokens, this has a lot yeah. of implications here as well. Because a Soulbound token is basically a token that's being <coughs> issued by an issuer of these tokens. Um, and things that can be issued are like uh, diplomas for graduating uh, university or getting a particular job in the crypto space like you you would be receiving these tokens that cannot be transferred and the main reason for this is you need to be able to prove that you've made some accomplishments accomplishments that cannot be traded and so if you tie that with something like proof of humanity then you are tying an identity with the accomplishments yep. and so uh, that has huge value and i think soulbound tokens maybe you know this is going to be um, something that's a project going to be implementing soulbound tokens as well. Yeah, yeah, I think all of it. And <clears throat> yeah, like we were talking about earlier, if if this truly is, you know, once you start identifying all these different attempts at you know identity standardization, and then like you know, uh, adding reputation, I guess, to your on chain existence. So, it, what else? I mean, all these are adding up, and then you know, the whole thing, the DeFi space, so the fact that in order to eventually access a lot of these applications you're going to have to leverage these on-chain identity you know mm-hmm. aspects so all of this is looking like the necessary infrastructure for like the emergence of of, of a society right the mm-hmm. same thing like all the little individual components of our you know modern society same thing is happening it's transitioning to the digital space right so right yeah you can extrapolate from there if this is just the beginnings of it like you know <clears throat> This is this is what like one of our big predictions like uh, all this collectively together is is how a community as big as Ethereum or whatever other on-chain like society or civilization becomes. Yeah. 
this is how you compete with like the real world. Yeah. You know, like this is the start of like a true value. Yeah. It's ecosystem. important. It's important because no matter what, if you wanted to get a loan for a house and you wanted to use like crypto to do that, like there's things like this that need to be implemented. And then on top of that, it needs to be recognized by your local government. Yeah. Because that otherwise, otherwise, you know, we're, you're, you're not able to defend the, the actual contracts for your house. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I mean, it's it has to be recognized, right? That's how how everything works. Yeah, but at some point, like at some point, the value is just going to be too tremendous and too uh, juicy, I guess, for like the the, yeah. phys- the physical world to not like you know phone with the mouth. Be like, dude, I got to tap into this. You know, for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you're if uh, if you're building houses, right, mm-hmm. and somebody comes to you and say, I want to buy a house, I have you know two hundred thousand dollars worth of crypto. You should be able to get a loan based off of that by itself, but then based off of your your qualifications, uh, credit worthiness, but on the crypto side. Yeah. Um, you should be able to, but you can't. And, mm-hmm. and it's because things like this don't exist, right, yeah. at that time. So, um, and then on top of this, you know, we were looking at the snapshot, the governance snapshot for proof of humanity. And one of the interesting things, kind of the latest, um, uh, I, I guess humanity yeah, we're just, improvement protocol. We're assuming that's what HIP means. Yeah. <laughs> just that based off EIP, right? Proposals. So, yeah. Um, and so I noticed this is, this is kind of the consequences of uh, decentralized governance is that pretty much every little change needs to be, I, I guess, voted on. It needs to be consensus on everything, dude. From, yeah. from which coffee is in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the way up to yeah, who who are we hiring next, dude? And in yeah. the same sense, like a, a company, yeah, as a company as big as Apple has decision makers all throughout its organization, right? This figuring out the next big tech product, or also yeah, figuring out like the uh, the standard the of documentation of, of, of printers or whatever the hell we should be using, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, so if this is if we're gonna build truly decentralized, you know, organizations or yeah. This is how a DAO should look, right? It's, it should, but yeah. I, I guess it's debatable on whether it could work this way. Yeah, I think it's because it's still so early, and yeah, it, it is. It, it just introduces so much more friction to like uh, execution, right? Yeah, as opposed to just you know a handful of individuals, you know, yeah, that you figuring, trust, that you tr- the, the overall organization, yeah, either is entrusted to or is just like in like subservient to. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, usually the ones, the handful of uh, decision makers within an organization, you know, they have like a tree of, you know, uh, which, yeah, yeah. Which reminds me that once you get approved, you can delegate your voting power to somebody else, mm-hmm. and so this will, you know, those people who are like heavily involved in this, they're going to be voting on your behalf, and you're going to trust them that they're going to make you know the reasonable choice here. Yeah, that that's more things that need to be figured out like yeah better delegation systems better ways to like form committees and like uh focus groups within these DAOs and stuff like that so like you know more trust and and, and that's not going to happen until we hmm. get these identity things figured out right so that, that way we can identify people within the ecosystem like you know this guy is more technical focused why because he has several years of uh technical achievements from building working on this protocol right. that protocol therefore he needs to be part of the technical committee you know yeah so let's trust this guy to make these decisions right let's vote him in yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah check this out look i voted pope a pope yeah. hasn't been set up for this proposal yet so, yeah dg so, uses that remember well do they use popes for this i, th- I might have just seen like the same like you know section here but i don't know if they actually utilize it yeah i don't know either yeah but my point is is that i think pope is going to be one leveraging the soulbound token yeah, and possibly. I think this would be a good reason to, because why would you need this pope to be tradable? Like you voted on some, you know, proposal. Well, I mean, pope is, is tradable or not? That wasn't really like the the intent. Yeah, the intent of value is just it's supposed to mark your yeah participation in something. So I guess if you were to propose or vote on this proposal, yeah, you just get the participation uh, NFT and that's it. Yeah, a little sticker. Yeah, <laughs> basically a little sticker is like hooray. Yeah. And then at the end of the month, you get to like flex your board of stickers to everyone else in the DAO. It's like, dude. yeah, which is huge because it, it identifies you as a voter. It, it is huge. I'm kind of like making, like making, belittling it a little <laughs> bit. Like, you know, 
retracing my days back to like elementary school. But yeah, I mean, yeah. that shit worked, dude. It was a great motivator. Yeah, you wanted the stars. You wanted to be the one with the most stars under your name, dude, because yeah. that was the flex back then. And then, yeah, like the teacher, like, you know, loved you. Yeah. Like, you know, the you, more stars you had, the more love you got. Exactly. The kid <laughs> with the one star, dude. Yeah. Get the fuck out yeah. of here, dude. I don't like you. you know, ostracized. <laughs> So yeah, um, I think we've covered everything here. Proof, proof of humanity. It's a, uh, it's going to be a sleeper because this is like, you know, in in this podcast we like to identify big problems in the crypto space and we like yeah. to identify solutions to those problems and, and this is a clear and obvious one. Civil attacks happen all over the place. Every single platform we use, we all seen it. The spam yeah. that we get every single day. Um, you know, implementing something like this where a platform such as Twitter says. You need to be. You need to prove that you're a human. Here's a proof of humanity protocol that you could use, and then all of a sudden, now you're on Twitter, and everybody on Twitter is proven to be human. Yeah, right. That that is such a huge thing mm-hmm. that um, you know, if it were to happen, I mean, it could improve the uh, the value of Twitter. I mean, significantly. Agreed. It yeah. would be the town hall, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Elon keeps talking about. Yeah. So, so yeah, things like this are going to be extremely important. It's hard to say who's going to be the protocol of yeah. the digital nation. It but doesn't have to be this one, but at the but nonetheless, it it, it opens Pandora's box to like you know, yeah, like you said, an obvious need for the overall crypto blockchain ecosystem to at some point embrace and like you know adopt. But yeah, who who knows who's going to be? It's, we've done this even with like the layer two race. We were identifying right. who's going to be the one to help Ethereum scale a bit because right. Gas is, was a major issue. And then, yeah, it was between XDAI, maybe Immutable, Polygon, all these different competitors, right? So yep. that was probably a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So and we're doing and so, it all over again. Yeah, this is going to happen all over again. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be about identity. And yeah. there's a lot of projects talking about it because it's important. Yeah, and Vitalik especially. This is this is what he's, like, really focused on. So Yeah. Yeah, follow Vitalik. Yeah, Vitalik. If you want more I think, info. I think it was through Vitalik we heard about Proof of Humanity, something like that. I think Neb, too, if you're watching that. I yeah, think, I think Neb might have brought it up as well. I mean, we've always heard about it. It's yeah. just so many things to look at, right? It's For just, sure. But we finally got around to it, so this is definitely interesting. All right, well, that's Proof of Humanity. Let us know if you found a competitor that you want us to take a look at. Let us know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Follow us on Twitter at the Runner and also at Metazone.io and Rovi.ai. And we will catch you in the next video. Peace.